Welcome back to Leeds Lately. Before we get into this video, if you could just hit that button down below, that would really help me out. But today's video is a tactics video and we're going to be talking a bit about Jorginho Rutter. Now, Jorginho Rutter didn't manage to bed himself in too much into the team last season um, when we were, were in the Premier League and obviously was signed in January. But no manager that was in after that point really fancied him too much to give him too much game time. I have a theory on why that might be. A lot of it is to do with the fact that um, he wasn't able to bed in in time in terms of um, he's quite a flair player and we were in a relegation battle, all that sort of stuff. But one small aspect that may may hinder him a little bit if we do go back to the Premier League is is what we're going to talk about today. But we're going to talk about it as a massive positive within the Championship. So the way we've got set up at the moment is something that is quite similar um, to what you'll see from Leeds most games. You've got uh, Rodan and Ampadu here with the ball ready to distribute. You've got Kamara, Gruev. Then you've got Archie Gray and Junior Firpo ready to overlap. That could be for Sam Byram too. Um, then you've got Somerville and Nonto in there with Jorginho here in the middle and Patrick Bamford up top. Now, in most teams, let's say that that was, I don't know, um, your, your average championship number 10. A lot of the time, when a ball gets pinged into a number 10 or an attacker, in the championship especially, that ball will come in there. And what this player will do is because players always they scan this way and that to make sure that there isn't anybody there that's going to take the ball off them. Often he will look and see, okay, he's got that player on his shoulder right there. I can't turn that way. And he's going to look that way and go, okay, that gap's going to close up instantly the moment I get the ball. So most championship players, most championship attackers would pop the ball straight back in there and then try and move somewhere else and try and receive the ball and stuff. And so... That's what, week to week, all of your opposition defenders are expecting to happen. They're expecting a ball to come into a player and then them go, oh, OK, I can't go forward, I'll have to go backwards and then sideways and backwards. And yes, we do play quite a few balls sideways and backwards, but Jorginho Rutter is kind of the... He's the outlier when it comes to these things. Uh, and why I think that's important is because opposition players aren't expecting it, but the Leeds players are or they are expecting it, the opposition players, and they just can't do anything about it. And so what he does, and obviously you'll all know this, is we've seen it all season. He gets the ball, and instead of going, okay, I've got a man on that side and a man on that side and passing it back, he takes it with him and he goes, okay, that, there's a gap there, but there's more likely to be closed down here. This player is occupied over here, but there's a big gap here. And so he'll roll his man. He's strong, good upper body strength, which is something I kind of didn't expect him to really have, but he leans on the players. He pushes them. He, he has his arm out like this, ready to kind of hold them off him the whole time. And he rolls his man. And when he does that, he opens up this space for him to run into. And you'll often see players scrambling to get back. Now, when they're scrambling to get back, they're going to come out of position. So this one's going to come towards him thinking, oh, my God, he's going to kill us here. And this is pretty. This is actually pretty much what happened, but except Jorginho came from this direction with the goal at the weekend, um, Somerville's first goal, because Jorginho came forward with the ball. He went past one player who obviously couldn't get the ball. The second player tried to come in and tackle him, but that's when Jorginho just poked it through his legs for Somerville to come and poke it in the bottom corner like that. So what he does is he drags players out of position Um and it, and it doesn't allow them to to adjust and get in the position they should be. And they think, oh, God, I've got to stay. I've got to go. They've got to make a split decision. And often that can be wrong. It's a 50-50 chance whether you get that right. I know you've been told certain ways to, to do it, so it shouldn't be a 50-50 decision. But when you've got Jorginho Rutter running at you, it makes that decision all the harder. And um, also, when he's turning like that, he's either drawing fouls or he's opening up the space. And like I said before, because these players around him, his own teammates, know that he's going to do that, they can anticipate that and therefore they're in a better position to receive the ball than they would have been if it was any other player and they weren't expecting it. So so you say you've got Jorginho in here, like we said a minute ago, and he receives the ball off Kamara. Sometimes you would see that go back to Kamara, but what he does is he turns, and as he runs into this space, Somerville already knows to make that run there, and Firpo is also making that overlapping run there. Of course, those players are trying to go with them, but a lot of the time he's able to play that ball through or 
if he's not able to play it through, he's able to play one round the side to Furpo. It opens up so many more options that you would have with any other number 10. And that's why I think up until this point, we had been struggling a lot with the fact that we'd been playing him as a striker. Because when he's in that striking position, yes, he can try and do that. Uh, oh, that's a player. Uh, yes, he can try and do that and try and go around a player, but it's not as effective because when you're in the defence like this, there's a lot more players that can, can can converge on you, easy for me to say, can converge on you when you're trying to do something like that. But in this midfield space, in playing in between the lines, there's so much more room to work with. And these players can't just automatically come towards you. They have to back off and go back towards their own box because they're marking Bamford, they're marking Somerville, they're marking Nonto, they're marking Gray, Thurpo. They've all occupied, which gives um, Jorginho a more clear run at the defence. Of course, he's got the midfielders coming across to try and cover him. But as he's running in there, these defenders have to decide whether they're going to go to the runners or whether they're going to come out and actually try and attack Jorginho, who's got the ball. And then, like I said before, with that goal, you see that sometimes he can poke it through the legs or pass it round them when that space opens up for, a, for a Jorginho to be able to exploit it. That's why I think he's so effective and Allowing him to go into that number 10 role with a, an out and out striker like Bamford ahead of him, that combination really helps things out. Now, I did a video about Bamford a few weeks ago talking about how having an out and out striker who knows how to make strikers runs can be really effective. Joel Peru can do this as well. Um, but what it allows is when he does break the lines and turns like that, Patrick Bamford also causes the defenders a nightmare because Patrick Bamford doesn't just stay still and go, come on, come on, come on, pass the ball. Instead, he will check back on himself and go this way around a player. So then by the time that player is scanned, he's going to go with him, which opens up a space then for Somerville when this goes across. Or if this player goes across to Somerville, it opens up a space through the middle. So what Jorginho and Bamford and Somerville and all those players do when they combine is give nightmares to those defenders. And you've seen it against teams like Rotherham and stuff. They can't defend against it they really really struggle to to defend against it and i think genuinely we would still be struggling a lot to break these teams down who are lower down the table who do play a more defensive system if we didn't have Jorginho in the number 10 who is able to turn the ball and dribble with it the only sort of recent comparison that i can give you to it is Rafinha now Rafinha was a little bit different because he's on the wing but it's the same kind of concept. I've said of, of Nonto this season that sometimes he receives the ball out wide and he's too hesitant to try and take a man on and go this way. And often he will come back to the defender or the fullback or whoever it is, Archie Gray there. And instead of taking them on. But what we saw with Rafinha is that Rafinha would nearly every time try to take them on down the line and get across into the box, for example. Um so I think it's massively important. And, and, and by the way, Nonto has improved on that massively of re recently. And I think that's come with his confidence and coming back into the side again. I think he's done really well at then properly going for things now. Um, but that's all I can compare it to over, over recent years. Rafinha's ability to just go and say, right, I'm beating a man, which... Jorginho, is, he's got that in spades. He's tall, he's strong, his upper body strength allows him to roll the player um, and, and create that space for Leeds to cause panic. And it almost creates a little bit of a, of a counter-attack. It's kind of the spark that sets us off going. And Jer and myself have said over the, the, this whole season about how Leeds are too slow when passing the ball around and, and we aren't creating enough movement with the ball and enough speed to open up gaps. But what Jorginho does is he sparks things. He's the catalyst for our attacks. He sparks things and he, when he's able to turn, that's when everything comes to life and those players can sprint and make those runs. So yeah, I just wanted to talk about that today because I saw it all throughout that Rotherham game and I thought, you know what, Jorginho, um, he's been fantastic this season. And I want that, that's the little key thing that makes him tick. Oh yeah, going back to it then, just before we finish, the reason that perhaps in the Premier League this might not um, be as effective for him is because there is a lot more players of that high quality dribbling that you would see in the Premier League. So there's a lot more players for your Man Cities, your Liverpools, your... Um, I was going to try to, Man United came into my head and then Chelsea came into my head and they're both crap. So, um, <laughs> But you know what I mean? There's a lot more quality players of that kind of ilk that will turn and run and try and run at defenders. Like a Jack Grealish, for example, he's always trying to face up def defender and go this way and that. There's a lot more players like that. So he maybe will have to adapt a little bit. But what I think that 
Jorginho's got that some of those other Premier League players don't have in terms of spinning a man and going in behind and running at people is that upper body strength and that ability to to be strong so that's going to be it for this one thank you so much for watching Leeds lately and I'll see you in the next one